Live? Yeah. Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us today. We hope everyone had a wonderful 4th of July and a nice long weekend. Um, it was a great one for us. Got a little travel in. Um, so today we are going to discuss our 11 healthy habits that change our life. Okay. Do you, question, do you often find yourself saying I can't or I won't instead of saying I can't or I will? I feel like it's very easy for most of us to fall into that trap. Um, I, I can't get up any earlier to wake up. I can't go to bed earlier. You know, I, I have don't to, have enough time. I don't have enough time. We, nobody has enough time. But really, we get it. I mean, it's, it's very easy to fall into that trap, but we're hoping that today can help you change that. Um, I was reading this morning um, a post by a, a lifestyle medicine doctor that I follow, and I just kind of felt like it went like hand in hand. Um, he says, waking up at 5 a.m. to work out is hard. Saying no to fast food is hard. Lifting heavy is hard, but you know what's harder? Joint pain from being overweight, health issues from eating bad, being frail and weak. So it just really, I mean, it should hit home and that can be, you can kind of enter in anything in those little uh, pockets, but you have to understand it, the benefit is so worth it. And once you get into a habit, right? Oh, habits. Then, <laughs> habits, then, then it sticks. So like I said today, we are going to share our 11 healthy habits that have changed our lives. Now, this won't necessarily be yours. You can take, pick and choose what you want, but you, the goal is to make your own list that works for you. And when you have your list, you got to stick with it. Yeah. And right. habits are funny, right? Like whether it's, like they say 21 days to make a habit, 90 days to create a healthy lifestyle change, you know, whether it's 50 days or 500 days, it really doesn't matter. It's going to be different for everybody, but you still have to put the work in. So whether it's day one, day 10 or more, but you just got to get started somewhere, whether you're like somebody that likes incremental change, small change, or you want to go all in and say, you know what, I'm going to adopt all 11 of these awesome ideas and I'm going to start doing it tomorrow. That would be pretty aggressive, but that works for some people. So, right. Yeah. Find what works for you. And be patient with yourself. For be sure. patient and understanding. Not every day is perfect. Sometimes we have a few steps forward and a step back, and mm -hmm. that's kind of the name of the game. And like Ryan just said, it takes a while for change. So sure. you have to be patient with yourself. If we get a little too pushy, or you're, you're going to end up quitting, saying this isn't working, I give up. We do not give up. Okay. Persist. All right, so let's go in. Um, oh, and if you have questions along the way, please put them in the comments because at the end we will cover all questions. Um, okay, so starting off, our number one, and this is just number one through 11, not in any order, but number one, strength training at least four days per week. So if you listen to us talk before, you understand or you know that we really value muscle. It is so crucial for health. Not to mention, we it's our first sign of aging and it, we start to lose muscle mass at age 30. Really when we're at an age that we're not thinking about losing muscle mass, just it's happening. So to preserve that muscle mass is so key. To work on it, to strength train, strength train is so imperative. And not to mention, right, I mean, what else does muscle do for us? It is a, I mean, look, it's a metabolically active tissue, you know, so it's gonna do a lot, much better job regulating, you know, stress. Let's just say what it is, right? What the body deals with every day, day in and day out. It is a lot more work to maintain muscle mass. There's no doubt about it. It requires a lot of input. So it's a constant battle of how do I gain, how do I gain, how do I maintain, and how do I not lose? Like Lisa said, when you start to break down and lose that muscle mass starting in our 30s and our 40s, there's noticeable changes. Visibly, aging has started to really get a, get a hold of you. So. It's those that maintain lean muscle mass will that will live a health generally, right? This the, the science supports this, live a healthier, longer health span and a lifespan. And they most likely will not have the issues that most people encounter later in life, which a lot of it's a mobility concern. Right? right. That's a huge one. You trip, you fall, you're over at age of 80 or whatever it might be, so over just call it over 65. The prognosis is rather poor. Sure. And also uh, on top of that, you know, go on with what Ryan was just saying, like our joint pain or sure. our, our cartilage decreases. But if we have more muscle, say we have more muscle in our quads, our hamstrings, like around our legs, supporting yep. our knees, guys, the muscles are going to take the grunt of it, not our joints. And that's the goal. And also healthy hormones. For sure. Muscles, muscle mass helps hormones. So if you think, oh, I'm aging and my testosterone is going down, well, it could also be because your muscle mass is going down. So That's let's find right. the root cause of the so problem rather than just treating, you know, the, this, um, I guess the symptom. So many. 
Yes, so really important to get your strength training in. It is a great rule of thumb, four days a week. Guys, this can be done in your home, in your kitchen, in your garage. It does not have to be YouTube's at a gym. A great resource. YouTube is wonderful for, for um, at-home exercises. And if you really are thinking about like four days a week, maybe two days, or definitely at least one is the lower body, but maybe two days, because again, it's that bigger muscle groups, um, it's so much importance in our lower, in our glutes, to our hamstrings, quads, legs. I mean, all everything down there. So it's really important that we work those muscles. Right. And I'm sure we all have someone that we know that works out all the time, but really all they do is cardio. We call those, those you know, the cardio junkies. Yeah. Um, yeah. I used to be one way, way back in the day. Um, and, and, you know, it's we love that, that runner's high. It feels so good to really, the heart rate up. And, and that is great but not all the time because also with that, that can affect our hormones negatively. Sure. That can actually break down muscle because, right, we're just burning through it, right? Mm -hmm. So you have to be careful. And if you do know someone like that, help them, help educate them and uh, maybe send them this, um, this episode. Mm -hmm. Okay, so strength training at least four days a week. Uh, okay, next is infrared sauna. Now we have a far infrared sauna, um, which just has, they, they both have great benefits, but... Um, some of those benefits are improved cardiovascular health, endurance, sports performance, improved cellular health, mm -hmm. and disease prevention. And a big one also is uh, redu Deep. reduction in toxins. There you go. And I don't want you to just think of like toxins like, oh, drugs and alcohol and that kind of stuff. I mean, daily toxins, microplastics. Are you drinking out of a plastic water bottle? Do you ever? Do you eat out of Tupperware, plastic Tupperware? I mean, microplastics are in everything and more and more studies are coming out showing that it's in our food everything that we eat it's crazy so that's just one example of a toxin that we constantly need to detox right no doubt about it microplastics are part of our arterial plaques now in, in heart disease i mean it's in our during our body it's crazy there's a lot of things that would contribute to toxin load throughout the day you know mold mildew exposures yes these look any exhaust fumes. I mean, fertilizer, pesticides. You know those types of things. So yeah, I mean, right. plenty, plenty of things that you would want to do uh, for the reasons why you would want to use a sauna if you can. I get it; it's not easy. You know, everybody has a sauna in their house. You know, and it's a significant investment. But certainly, there's probably a place nearby, a gym or some type of health facility that would have a, a sauna, and that might be part of your plan. Yes, more and more are popping up. Yeah. Um, just studios that you can get a pass you know, buy a 20 pack, tap in there one to two times a week. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's better than nothing. And again, heating from the inside out and getting that deep sweat is so, so, so important. Um, okay, so there goes our sauna use. If you do have ac access to a sauna, try at least four days a week, okay? Um, all right, and going along with sauna is also ice bath, cold water submerge. This can also be cold water in your shower. This has so it many, sucks. it does, it hurts. It sucks so bad. <laughs> it hurts, but again. It feels in, amazing when you're done. Right, and instead of saying, no, I can't, because I, I was one of those, because I hate, hate, hey, hate cold water. Um, and I do one regularly, a nice bath regularly. Yeah. And, she does um, more than I do. Right, so great for immune support. Yep. Great for pain relief and recovery. Um, yeah. Weight loss, because that, that shiver that you get at the end. For sure. Um, and the biggest thing that I want to hit home with is the mood support. I mean, it helps reduce uh, depression, which is so prevalent right now yeah, that it, it's yeah. sad. Um, but there's things out there that can really help. So again, if you don't have a cold water plunge or someplace to submerge, if you live somewhere that has uh, where, you know, cold water oceans, if you have your a pool, I mean, obviously we're in Florida in the summer, our pool doesn't work, but pool in, in our winter, it works. Just get yourself in there, you know, one to three minutes um, or a shower. At the end, I'm not saying you have to take your whole nice shower in cold water, but at the end, let the water just run on you for a couple minutes. Again, it's not comfortable, but we were made to do hard, uncomfortable things. I tell my kids, our kids that all the time. Oh, for sure. Okay, so yes. So ice bath, cold water, submerge, cold shower. Oh, also stress relief, you know, and better sleep hits hits both of those. Okay, next, sunlight in the morning. Sure. And I know you're probably sitting there thinking, and if you are, give me uh, give me a, a hands up, a thumbs up. But I don't have access to sunlight in the morning, or by the time I you know get to work, you know it's it's dark when I get to work, and then I'm inside. 
yes, get it. It, it. it happens and we'll give you some tips on what to do, but really why we want sunlight in the morning, it improves our sleep patterns, our sets our circadian rhythm and hormone production, especially with the vitamin D. Exactly. Vitamin D is a hormone. Yep. Um, helps regulate our sleep wake cycles, which sleep. Ryan always talks yeah, a lot about it. it. You nailed it, exactly. Yep. Um, it also reduces stress and, mm -hmm. and supports mental health. So um, if you do, uh, if you are able to get sunlight in the morning, no sunglasses, right? Let all that sunlight come in. It's so important. Um, and if you are one of those that does not have access, of course, always making sure you're supplementing with vitamin D, but also there's red light. Yeah, yeah, there's light. There, yeah, yeah there, there, I can't think of many cases where somebody would, there's times of the year in certain climates and geographic locations. Sure. But yeah, I mean, if you're at work, you can say, hey, look, I'm gonna step out real quick. I'll be far more productive when I get back. Right. It's only 15 minutes. It's I know. Not, it's not a lot of time. It really I mean, isn't. Right. Have you ever noticed though, like say you do that at work, you're at work and you're yeah. feeling so sluggish and then you just go stand outside in the sun. All it takes is like five, 10 minutes yeah. and you feel so much better. For sure. Like I know it because I know how it feels. Yeah. Um, okay. So there was our sunlight in the morning. Do your best. It doesn't have to be right when you wake up, but it really does help if you can. And like for me, I get up when it's dark. I go to the gym when it's dark, so I don't get to get my sunlight, you know, in my eyes until a little later, but I make sure it happens. Okay, next, we have walking or movement after meals. This is so, so important. Are you one of those people that eats a big meal and then says, oh, I'm so full, I gotta lay down? Don't do that. It don't is, do don't, that. It's so bad. So it's not just bad for digestion, which you're probably thinking that's where I'm going. So wh what I'm talking about is we eat and our blood glucose rises, right? It does in response to food. Depending on what you eat, it depends on how high it goes. But that that blood glucose, it's circulating in our blood and we really don't want it there. We want it to be used. So if we, if we move our bodies, our muscles are using that blood glucose, okay? So crucial. Yes, helps with digestion. So example, we try to take, well, we, we always take an after dinner walk you know, sometimes, you know, breakfast and lunch, you know, we're basically on our own, but you always have to figure out some way to move your body after. Whether you're, maybe you're in your office and you just ate, stand up, do 10 to 30 squats, get that blood pumping, get the muscles pulling in that glucose. So extremely important. But not to mention, say you have your three meals, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and you are able to squeeze in like a mile. That's three miles that you just added onto your, onto your day where you, a mile is not that big of a deal. So you're not really thinking, you're doing that much. So, I mean, dance in your kitchen with your kids after dinner. I don't care what it is, but move your body. Do not sit down. Yeah, totally. And it's funny because when people start doing this, wow, I, that, I would think that's probably one of the more impactful things somebody could start doing easily that maybe are like this. That as soon as you start walking or moving after a meal, uh, you won't stop. You won't go back to sitting after right. a meal. Right. Yeah, feels so great. Mm -hmm. And I mean, especially if you're, you know, if you have diabetes, just think about the added benefit that this has to your blood glucose levels. Yeah. You will notice a change. Okay, number six, we have protein. Eat your protein. Okay, <laughs> one gram per pound of ideal body weight, lean body mass. There are calculators um, on that you could just quickly Google and plug your information in. Um, so if like you're someone that weighs 200 pounds, but really you should be 150, you know, you're gonna be eating more towards the 150. But protein is crucial. We already went back, we talked about the muscle, right? So this kind of goes a little bit hand in hand with that, but to build muscle, we also have to have adequate protein. Protein also keeps us full. So have you ever had like a meal and you eat it and then maybe you feel you feel hungry again like 30 to 60 minutes later there's no satiety protein is helps us feel full so it's so it's so important yeah and you know it's like protein is also the building blocks we say you know the amino acids of the protein are building blocks right but they're the building blocks of not just muscle they're building blocks of hormones that you've talked about and how important they are of course neurotransmitters so you know most of people know the serotonin and the serotonin and the dopamine enzymes for breaking down food, uh, just the development of everything, <clears throat> cartilage, nerves, tendons, ligaments, you know, so it, it it's, poor, it's important stuff, it, you know, it really is. And our dietary recommendations have been inadequate. So, you know, they're just there to, to, to essentially make us survive where we're trying to talk about these things. The things we're talking about today are really about thriving, really about being and feeling your best possible best. So, right. Yeah, we're not a malnourished 
person that is just trying to get by. Yeah, so we are trying to live a long, healthy life. Correct. And that's what these goals are. So if you're going to track anything, track your protein. Yeah. Um, make sure you hit your protein goals, and then your carbohydrates and fats will fall into play. Um, obviously, if you're doing weight loss, watch your calories. Even for maintenance, we kind of have to know where our calories at. So it's always important to track. So grams of protein. I mean, personally, I get about 150 to 160 grams of protein a day, and I weigh 130 ish pounds. So I do go over. I, I do go over, but it works for me. I mean, I feel great. I'm able to build and retain muscle. Um, okay, yeah. So eat your protein. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Okay, moving along. Number seven, I just combined these two because there's so many things that you can avoid with food, but really the two main ones that we, we highlight are no seed oils or added sugars. Seed oils meaning like canola oil, soybean oil, sunflower oil, safflower mm -hmm. oil. So, I, they're yes. like, they're in everything, which is, it's yeah. very difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and no added sugars. Uh, but starting off with the oils, if you notice, or or if you haven't noticed, start reading. Make sure you're reading labels. I don't know if you are label readers, but you've got to read everything because what it says on the front is just marketing. You have to know really what's in it. And mostly everything has got some kind of seed oil in it. And I hate it. I mean, there's times I, I you know, love shopping at Whole Foods. And, but like I was just there yesterday and I don't remember exactly what I picked up, but it was one of um, the 365 Whole Foods brand. And oh, I had to buy these gluten-free Oreos making my mother-in-law cake. <laughs> and I was reading the comparison of the 365 cheaper brand to the other gluten-free brand. And the 365 had canola oil. And I just don't understand, like it is known. But the problem is the number one reason why you should avoid seed oils is um, they are high in omega-6s. Now we all hear about omega-3s, like you know omega-3 fatty acids, like inner factor four. They're high in omega-6s and we need to have a balance, a, a ratio between our omega-6 to three. Do you know that ratio off the top of your head? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I feel like it's like I don't want to one, speak. I know. I feel like it's like one to four. I cannot remember right now. But there's a ratio of your omega-6 to omega-3. And the problem is we're not getting enough omega-3 and we're getting way too much omega-6, which causes so much inflammation in our body. So that's like the number one thing, besides the fact that seed oils are highly processed. They strip it of nutrients and antioxidants, mm -hmm. um, biggest things. And then obviously we all know added sugars. Sugar is like, sugar is the enemy. It Big really time. is. Now I'm not Big talking time. about a piece of fruit or something maybe made with dates. Those are all like, you know. Yeah, natural sources. Yeah, natural sources that you still need to have in moderation. Again, mm -hmm. moderation is key. But the added sugars in anything and everything we're eating, it adds up and it is so inflammatory and causes so many diseases. So again, if you're going to avoid any food groups, avoid those seed oils and avoid added sugars. If you're wondering out there, well, what oil should I focus on? Focus on olive oil, avocado oil, and coconut oil. Those are the best. And there are brands that use all those. All right, number eight. Work out with your partner or spouse. It helps increase joy and relationship. So obviously this is very personal to us, but sure. we don't get to work out all the time together. Schedules don't allow. But when we do, we enjoy it so much. And it's just a different thing of like being together and hanging out together and pushing each other. It really helps build relationship and it really does fill us with so much joy. So if you have a partner or a spouse or a best friend, get out there and move your bodies with them. Um, I mean, even your kids, right? It can help your relationship, Absolutely. I promise you. And you find that it's a little bit more competitive and fun, like at the same time, it's a fun, competitive spirit, right? right? And there's accountability. Like if one person in the household, just taking a spousal relationship as an example, if one person's committed to health goals and the other wants no part of it, it tends to be, I don't know what it is, but it's out of ignorance or just doesn't, doesn't really believe in what's going on and it can be a very difficult yeah it causes friction in the friction, relationship i mean you might yeah. be out there thinking yeah. like yes i try so hard to be healthy my husband wants nothing to do with it you know that there's tension and friction there so oh, yeah. work on doing things together it really helps your relationship um okay this is a big one um and i have some uh quotes here for it so this is community okay you need to have a sense of community it is so crucial to health and longevity I'm going to read you first. I have two of them. So first from the Surgeon General. Um, he did a whole article on loneliness. Loneliness is far more than 
just a bad feeling. It harms both individual and societal health. It is associated with a greater risk of cardiovascular disease, dementia, stroke, depression, anxiety, and premature death. The mortality impact of being socially disconnected is similar to that caused by smoking up to 15 cigarettes a day, and even greater than that associated with obesity and physical inactivity. I mean, if that doesn't hit home to you guys, you have got to understand, you have to have a sense of community. And then uh, Dr. Mark Hyman, you know, says this, and if you haven't, if you don't know Dr. Mark Hyman, he is a, a wonderful resource, great to follow. But he says, the power of community to create health is far greater than any physician, clinic, or hospital. And now, you know, this is coming from a doctor. So you, you really have to understand this, how important the sense of community is. And I mean, you might be out there wondering, well, I, I, how, where do I begin? I don't know what to do. It is hard because you kind of have to put yourself out there. I mean, we, we join, we have a gym. Mm -hmm. um, our gym is a very nice sense of community. They also do we, uh, monthly or so they do these get togethers. You might like meet at the beach for a barbecue or whatnot. So that's one that really helps us. But I mean, you can join a book group, a reading club, right? There's so many clubs out there in your neighborhood that you probably don't know about. Um, this could also be joining a, um, for your kids, a youth group or for you, a church or a temple or any, any type of, you know, religious uh, structure, just something that brings you together with people to communicate with and talk with. Amen. Right. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so important. Um, all right, we're getting there. Number 10, water with electrolytes first thing in the morning. Now, of course, water with electrolytes is always great, but for us, we love first thing in the morning because you think about it, you're just you've just been sleeping, hopefully, you know, seven to nine hours. So your body is on the verge of of you know dehydration. So instead of just waking up and carrying on you need to hydrate your body. It has literally been for seven to nine hours without any fluid. Um, but also, Ryan, you want to emphasize on why why electrolytes? Why not just chug a big glass of water? Yeah, and it comes back to that one too where avoid, we, we need to avoid sugar. So let's not get too too uh, focused on the, the effect of sodium. I, I understand that sodium has is, is been recommended to be restricted in certain individuals, but for the most part, it's really the sugar that is to blame. The kidneys are having a, it, it wreaks havoc on the kidneys. As far as the sodium, potassium, magnesium, these are your main electrolytes. The, this balance is so important. There's a homeostatic sort of balance in our cells where there's a, even a sodium potassium pump. And so the ratio of electrolytes is super important. And uh, stay tuned for later this week, and you'll see that we're Live Good rolls out their new Live Good hydration amplifier, which is cool. But right now, the, the, with electrolytes first thing in the morning, it's it's so important right away, like to at least get that 20 to 30 ounces of water in and then have some electrolytes with that as well. I think that's uh, it's a great way to get your day going and to provide your your muscles, your nerves, your energy. It supplies, you know, basically that those electrolytes are what is what balances our water in our cell. Yes. Yeah. It's and so important. That and just hydration is so key. And you might be thinking, well, I can't drink that much. I'm going to be in the bathroom every 20 to 30 minutes. Your body will, will adapt. If you're not used to drinking that much water, yes, you will be taking bathroom breaks more often. But again, your body balances out. And also just starting off with trying to consume a lot of, of water, you will feel full. So um, that will also subside a little bit. But if you ever are out there thinking like, I need a snack, I'm hungry, what's going on? You just ate, just drink some water, just tapping into the hydration. <laughs> yeah, sure. So, okay, but honestly, electrolytes first thing in the morning, key, your body is dehydrated when you wake up, you need it. Um, and our last one, number 11, is daily supplementation. Now, obviously, we are live good, we're a supplement company, but we didn't just start this for, you know, we didn't start supplementing with the creation of the company. Let's put it that correct, way. We've correct. been supplementing for years and years and years prior to the living. Yes, which led us to wanting to Be have partners. our own, yes, for sure. our own supplement company. But it is so crucial. So, I mean, obviously the eliminating nutrient deficiencies, that's our multivitamin, our magnesium, our D3, our decreasing inflammation. We are all burdened with unwanted inflammation, whether it's present in our skin, in our joints, in our mood, in our, uh, you know, our gut. I mean, crazy. So factor four is our potent, potent anti-inflammatory. Um, and then loading our body with antioxidants. Um, I don't have everything out here today, but like our super greens and super reds, 
so high in antioxidants and phytonutrients. So is coffee, so is our collagen. So exactly. I mean, there's so much. So um, much. And then we talked a lot about protein and protein. muscle. I mean, we have our, this is one of our protein powders. We also have a chocolate, chocolate whey. Oh, yeah. Essential aminos, building blocks of protein. I mean, the list goes on. Uh, if you have not checked out our products, go to livegood.com. You will find all of our products, all of our information. We do have um, learn more sections with some information as well as some of them of training videos, which can always be found also on our YouTube channel. So, I mean, it is, it's crucial to health. Again, the goal is to thrive, not just survive. You want to feel good and thrive. You want to live a long, healthy life, right? Absolutely. You want to increase increase your health span. You've got to take your supplements. Yeah. Bottom line. And you need to also know what what you're taking, why you're taking it, when to take it, that kind of thing, how to take it. So, part of what we're what we're trying to do as well. So, when you go to the website, learn more. You can email us email us to ask questions. It's not something where you just all of a sudden take up, start taking them all at the same time. And that you know so. Make sure you know what, what the purpose of supplementing is. Yeah, but the greatest thing, I mean, I'm always here for questions. If you've been emailing me, emailing me you know I get back to you guys within 24 hours. If you haven't, ask me questions. Um, okay, so before we answer questions, again, make sure you subscribe because you don't want to miss any of this information that we put out there. Um, and also, uh, leave us comments. If you're not just asking questions, comments, like us, whatever it is, um, it really helps us learn more from you and helps us share our, our knowledge. Yeah. All right, let's go into sure. some questions. I know you've been picking through some. Um, yeah, I'm sorry, I actually have, but yeah, we're, we're moving. Let's go back up. Love that all of these people joining are saying how much they appreciate it. This is awesome. We have good product coming out. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, and while he's looking too, also um, Ryan did mention that we have our hydration amplifier launching should be this week yep, so this week. our next monday our live will be all about hydration and our hydration amplifier so again make sure you subscribe so you do not miss that one um we this has been a product we've been waiting for and this i think so profits with patrick thank you for a lot of your commentary i appreciate it the yeah, i think you're responding to a question earlier about sugar and honey and uh, i was just looking for that one actually but uh, yeah, I mean, look, sugar in natural source, uh, here we go, is pure, how is pure raw, honey good? So yeah, I mean, natural sources of sugar are beneficial. We need sugar in our cells, we absolutely mm -hmm. do. Just to give you a quick story, I was walking out of our local gym one day and I had a pile of Skittles on the front thing. I'm like, Skittles? What in the world with Skittles? And one of the women, women next to me is like, well, we need sugar after we work out. And I said, yeah, but not in the form Skittles. of Skittles. Skittles, ah. like, come on. Like, are you kidding me with all the all these synthetics and artificial dyes and everything? You name it, it's disgusting. No, you're right. We need sugar. There's no doubt about it. But you're not you don't need it in the quantities we're consuming in society. Right. You don't need it in every single package processed food. So get it right. from your blueberries, get it from a few strawberries, a little half a banana, get it from your honey. Yes. But again, yes, in moder moder moderation. In moderation. Moderation. Yeah. yeah, there are some, you know, sugars out there that are better than others, but bottom line you don't want to overdo it. And when it's added into every single thing, it's very easy to, to overdo. Yeah, and same with the salt conversation. You know, you need to be careful with the salts you choose. You want to use high quality salts. I mean, look, even like Himalayan sea salt, they're still using C4 to detonate and blow it up. So there are trace, they're like trait, like trace elements of, of synthetic uh, explosive, believe it or not. I saw that there was a test done on that. So I, I'm not, that's not what I'm getting into, but like know your source, know what you're taking, try to get this highest quality of whatever it is that you're consuming. And I get it, budget is a concern. Are you kidding me? Like you just went to like Whole Foods and it was ridiculous, a few hundred dollars. I just said, this is absurd. The food costs are absurd, but thankfully, when it comes to sourcing high quality ingredients and dietary supplements, Live Good is absolutely changing the game. What are you doing? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to jumping in. All right. But I do think I do think um, sodium's gotten a bad rap for what sugar has done. I really do think that. Right. Well, exactly if what you, we have on here. If you went so Good hard boy. and restricted all aspects of sodium, I mean, you know, you're talking about your electrolyte balance being completely out of whack. Here's just another one. Drop 10 pounds, taking reds, greens in the morning, Thanks, and amino those collagen yep. would lean twice a day, intermittent fasting for 16 hours as well. Sugar and alcohol cravings way down. Way down. Amazing, right on, amazing. Um, and we also did, uh, last Monday, we did intermittent fasting. Our, our, so make sure you, again, subscribe so you can check that out. But yeah, 
Great work. Keep it up. I mean, success stories, guys. What happened? I don't know. Oh, I need to get rid of it. Yeah, I just hide. Yeah. Success stories are amazing. Where are you going? What are you I doing? I don't know. Okay, did you see any other? I don't know what's happening. All right. All right. <laughs> we'll drop off here. Yeah, not many other questions. Um, some great comments. Um, will this list be available? Yes. So um, this live is always on our YouTube channel. Someone asked, will it, will it be available? It is always on our YouTube channel, so make sure you flag it, make sure you share it. Um, and, you know, just to help you guys out, I'm just going to run through the list real quick. So One more thing. Okay. Too. Kelly, what's up? Nice to see you. Thank you for this. I'm loving the children's gummy. It's impossible to eat too many left out there. So good. Moderation, I'm sure. Guys, look at the label. You will see that there is sugar. It, we Unavoidable in this case. We chose a good quality sugar source. I, I take this as an opportunity to educate your children, educate those around you. First thing they want to do is look at the label and say, well, there's four grams of sugar. Yeah, there is. That's not the end of the world as long as you're not getting a lot of excess sugar in other foods. So inform, educate. Great chance to talk to your 12-year-olds like mine right now is now looking at labels for sugar. I mean, doesn't know every ingredient and have any idea what the rest of the stuff is really talking about. But sugar, no sugar. And so just making good informed choices. Thank you, Kelly. If you're using it for adult dosing, I think it's up to what we say. I think it's six. Six gummies a day. You guys are awesome. All right. I'm going to just go through the list. So if you're writing it down, it's easier. But again, strength training at least four days a week. Infrared sauna use. Ice bath, cold plunge, or cold shower. Sunlight in the morning. Walking or movement after meals. Protein, one gram per pound of ideal body weight or lean body mass. Again, calculators, you can find them on Google. No seed oils or added sugars. Work out with partner and spouse to help increase relationship and joy. Love it. Sense of community. Yep. Water with electrolytes first thing in the morning and daily supplementation. So those are our, our 11 healthy habits that have changed our life. Right? I love it. And yes. they, they can change. We might do this again next year and have something different on that list. Right. And again, take home message, guys. This does not have to be your list. Adapt what you can, adopt what you can, and adapt for it to work for you. Right. Again, right. I encourage you today, get a pen and paper and make a list of 11 and fill in yours. And even if they're not healthy habits that you're partaking in, they're goals, right? You need to, you need to start a goal is the first step to getting there. We all have goals. And sometimes when you see it on paper too, it really puts it in, into perspective. That was great. Nice way yes. to close. We also love hydrogen water as well. Yes. Hopefully we can Thank bring you, that to the table too. <laughs> all right, guys, any further questions, comments, you can go ahead and email me. Um, I have seen some questions on here that weren't really relevant to what we were discussing. So please e email them to me. I will get back to you. And as always, tune in with us every Monday at noon. Thanks Bye, for, guys. Bye. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. See you next time.